Hey, I'm Zebra. If you don't know me, I have around 1500 hours on Doomfist from Overwatch 1 and Overwatch 2, and I've hit top 10 in Season 1 before Doomfist was buffed, as well as top 10 after he was nerfed recently. Before anyone asks, I'll talk about the settings that I use. I use 5 cents and 800 DPI, but sensitivity is really up to you, and it should be whatever you're comfortable with. If you're having trouble aiming and you're low rank, a general rule of thumb is just to lower your sense. I also switched my slam and block cooldown, but this is really just personal preference, as the slam in Overwatch 1 was bound to E. A lot of people also ask what's my crosshair, so here it is. Again, this is just personal preference. Before we get started, if you're looking for something to do during your long tank queues, look no further than Raid Shadow Legends, available on PC and mobile. Raid is completely free to play with over 80 million downloads already. I love coming up with new strategies to take down the endless amount of bosses the game has to offer or fight through the many floors of the Doom Tower. The Doom Tower can be pretty fun but tricky as you'll need to fight through the different enemies on each floor to beat it. I can always count on new champions and updates every single month to keep the game fresh and exciting for me. Raid has prepared something special for all new players this Christmas. Get ready to celebrate the 12 days of Raid. Each day, experience a new chapter of this wintery story and play a new minigame for a chance to win some amazing in-game and real-life prizes including holiday-themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. Existing players can also receive gifts by following the link to the Christmas event. This event is happening until January 10th, so make sure to log in. New players can also use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack worth almost $30. You will find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Also, are you interested in mixed martial arts? Raid's got something extra special happening right now. They've just released a legendary champion based off of MMA and pro wrestling legend, Ronda Rousey. You can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're a new or longtime player. Just log in for 7 days between now and February 28th, and Ronda's all yours. Doomfist Rocket Punch Momentum Cancel is pretty essential to his kit, as it allows you to go further with his punch. All you need to do is press space or jump during his rocket punch. Turn punching is when you move your mouse before pressing jump, and it allows you to turn corners with your punch. Super Slam is when you go farther than you normally can by cancelling your punch and then slamming directly afterwards. Oh, it is mostly used to get out of spawn quickly or dive a sniper on a far high ground. There's multiple ways you can cancel your slam. You can cancel it by pressing your slam button again, or cancel it quickly with your punch or block. The faster you cancel your slam, the higher you're able to get, so by pressing the slam button again, you aren't able to get as high as by cancelling it with your punch. B-hopping during Seismic Slam was removed, but you can still B-hop by cancelling your slam. All you need to do is not jump before your slam, cancel your slam, and then hold space. This can be useful for getting out of spawn quickly, or carrying your momentum and then punching. Diags are pretty situationally useful, but I get the question of how to do them pretty often, so here are the two main ways to do it. You can either jump and punch along a slanted wall, or use an object to hit your feet and propel yourself upwards. You can also hit your head on something like a doorframe to get a downwards diag. Using your punch is probably the best way to engage, but it's not always possible because of distance or high ground. You want to try to set yourself up to engage with punch, so either take high ground first, or get closer to the enemy. Also keep in mind where walls are. Your charge punch is going to be useless if there isn't a wall for the enemy to hit. Try to set yourself up with slam at a good angle to get a punch on a wall. You can take space with your punch by punching next to an object or corner and hiding and waiting for your cooldowns. Most of the time you want to try to use your punch to engage and use your slam to get out, as you can still do damage with your slam when exiting if you turn around. Also you can escape to high ground with your slam and also go further. Use your slam to engage when you need to close distance or take high ground. You can follow up with your punch for burst damage on an alone target, or just to punch the enemy back. Don't be afraid to flank, especially against tanks like Orisa and Roadhog. You can't really fight them, and they won't die unless you kill their supports. Use your cooldowns to reposition on a high ground behind them, and it can cause the enemy team to split their attention or back up. Knowing when to full engage with all your cooldowns can be tricky, but if you have your ultimate, don't be afraid to full commit more, since you have a free escape if anything goes wrong. Having your ultimate just allows you to play more aggressive. It allows you to use all your cooldowns and get a full set of cooldowns back, or you can also use it when you're about to die.
It can be pretty difficult to land a good ultimate, especially with Kiriko and Roadhog often ready to deny your value. Don't be afraid to just go for health packs to stay alive and in the fight. I know a lot of people rightfully struggle with Orisa and Roadhog, so here are some tips. As I've mentioned previously, you should try to ignore them for most of the time, but here's what to watch out for if you want to punish or contest them. If Roadhog is half health or about to be, you can engage and you will likely be able to cancel his heal and kill him. If Roadhog uses his hook, it doesn't necessarily mean to chase after him, but it does mean that you have time to go on to the rest of his team. If Orisa used gold, try to cancel her javelin spin and she'll be defenseless for up to 12 seconds. This applies to every tank, but especially going against Roadhog or Sombra, you need to be able to get behind cover to dodge hook or fall back if you get hacked. You should try to plan your engagements around corners or objects, so when you use your punch, try to punch near an object that you can go behind or slam on a corner. Also notice how I'm cycling my abilities to keep the enemy back and preventing them from leaving the choke. People who I've auto-reviewed in the past usually have an issue with target priority. I suggest targeting people who are alone or on high ground, and then targeting healers, and then the tank. Obviously you can punish their tank if they're out of position, or you can try and boot people into your team. Your target priority should also depend on who used their cooldowns. If you see a Widow use Grapple or a Sojourn use Slide, you should be trying to contest them. Try to knock the enemy team off high ground to provide space for your team, and it's usually your job to go after snipers who are alone. Try to save your block until after the enemy uses their stuns like Javelin, Hook, Hack, or Doom Punch. Use your punch to cancel enemy cooldowns. This is really important and you need to know your matchups and know what you can stun. I recently did a video with CarQ where you can find tips about all the matchups. Unfortunately, because of the recent block nerf, some things you can't get your full block off of, like Junkrat Nades, Widow Shot, Ferro Rocket, Sigma Rock, and others. Don't forget that you get your punch back after charging your block, so punch before blocking, and you can fake the enemy team to look at you, or you can just punch to get free damage. One of the most common questions I get on stream is just how to get better at Doomfist. It's not really a question I can answer with a simple response, but the best way to practice in my opinion is just to grind ranked with a growth mindset. Keep in mind that winning does not equal improvement. Don't blame your team, look at what you could have done better. If you really want to get better, look at your replays of games and look at every time that you died and see what you could have done differently. If you're really lost, a good way to learn is just by watching others. I stream almost daily at twitch.tv slash zebra, so come say hi. Thanks for watching, I wish you the best of luck in your games, and thank you guys for 150k subscribers. I appreciate every single one of you.